Yeah, well, I just first just want to congratulate Wes and his program and their team. I thought they were really special today. Um, they played really well. Uh, obviously, um, James really played well that first half and uh, was ready to go. But I thought their whole group really played well. And, um, you know, for us, um, you know, we're going to give God the glory and victory. And we're going to give him the glory and defeat. It just – it wasn't our day. Um, we out-rebounded them. Uh, 14 on the offensive boards, 13 overall. We got 20 more shots than they got. Um, we just, the first half we really struggled guarding, you know, defensively. And, uh, but, man, I'm, we're all disappointed. I mean, that locker room is no fun. It's rough. But as I told Shay, coming off the floor, like, this group has done so much, has accomplished so much. I will not let them or anyone take away from what they've been able to do this season um, with the things that have happened. Like, this group's amazing. It wasn't our day. We didn't, you know, we, we, we take great pride in being, you know, tough. And tough doesn't have anything to do with how much weight you can lift. Today, we probably weren't as tough as we've been in the past over the last two months. But again, it's, it's not like we woke up and went, and hey, we're not going to be tough today. Um, it just it happens sometimes in athletics. Um, but those kids, these kids played their heart out today. And again, maybe didn't play well. You give, our, give, give our opponent credit for that a little bit. And then um, again, Sometimes these things happen. You know, it's probably the worst we've played all, what, two months? I mean, we just, man, we smoked a lot of really good looks in the first half. We didn't guard, if, but if we don't change that and we make three shots, it's 43-39 instead of 31. And, and you can go down the list of how many really good looks we had, who had them, and all that. So sometimes... I don't know why, it's just not in the cards. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think, again, when you look at 20 more shots, I mean, they outshot us at the free throw line, 25 to 11, um, you know, and, 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 but we outscored them in the paint, 44 to 24, um, outscored them in the second half. But we just, we got popped early, didn't really handle that well, again, Probably could have easily been a four-point game, two-point game at half. But, and this group is, just because they dropped one today, doesn't make them any less special, doesn't make them any less remarkable, doesn't make them any less of who they've been all year long. Shaley Gonzalez should be up here. She's the most incredible um, young lady what she's brought to our program, the impact, the presence that she has, so far reaching and everlasting. Uh, been here two short years. Like, I can't believe she's already been here two years and she's not gonna be back next year. Would love to have had her for all six, Grandma. But just, you know, we don't win without her. We don't win without all these kids. Shay Holly had to, go from being our third defender on the perimeter, being number one, and just welcomed it with open arms and did it. So we've had a lot of kids step up. Tonight wasn't our night. Give North Carolina State credit. But it doesn't make it any less of the season that we've had today, and it doesn't make these young ladies any less of the competitors they've been throughout the course of the season or any less of the champion that they are. These kids are truly champions. Go ahead and open it now, now for questions to the student athletes. We'll start in back. Uh, Matty Armides with the Daily Texan. Madison, this is your first time reaching the Elite Eight. It is your freshman year. Just, you know, your feelings on being here and, and how you use this to, for motivation going into the next season. Um, yeah, it's my first one. Uh, it's been a long season, like, you know, I got here, um, you know, workouts are going great, you know, we look like 
a Final Four team. We believe that we'll get to the Final Four. And then, you know, things happen. People have injuries. And, you know, all the whole, like, hope, like, basically just, like, everybody just mind change, you know, but just like the outside, not ours. You know, people go down. And, you know, they say they're not winning Big 12 in our regular season. They're not winning this many games. They're not making to the Final Four. They're not making this far. They're not a one seed. And, you know, just the fight we have, you know, we had to get here. Um, we kept fighting. We kept fighting the odds. And we made people believe. And, you know, I think this is my, you know, like this is my first season. You know, it didn't go the way I wanted. But I think it's a lot to learn from this season also. Um, I'm just grateful to be here, blessed. My teammates, are, like, they're the best. Um, you know, it don't feel good, but it'll definitely push me in the future. Go ahead. Um, Danny Davis, the Austin American Statesman. Shay, what made um, Asia so tough to defend today? Um, obviously, she was making shots. She's really good off the bounce, so, you know, it wasn't like you could give her one thing. You know, she couldn't find a way to score the other way. But, um, yeah, I think it maybe took me too long to adjust. We did a better job with her in the second half just as a team. But, yeah, the first half, I mean, she's a really good, talented player, um, can score at all three levels. So. Manny Ramirez from the Daily Texan. Aliyah, your play earned you a spot on the all-tournament team. Um, I just kind of wanted to ask you just how you're feeling right now, um, the emotions kind of that you're going through, and just um, what it's like to have your play recognized to, for the all-tournament team. Um, that's great. We didn't, we didn't win, though. That was the overall goal coming into this tournament. I, it's hard. Was here my freshman year. It, it's I, I I I don't have much to say. It's just it's 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 hard because I saw the work that this team put in, the work that I've put in, um, and it's great. I got that accolade, but we had goals, um, and I'm really proud of us. I don't want to take away that we got to the elite eight, but we had. We had goals beyond that, um, and I, I saw us doing it. So, just it's tough. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Matt Hammer, just from the Daily Texan. Shay, you have a lot of emotion on your face right now. Can you just talk about what it's like playing with your your duo partner in in Shay Lee and, and um, the season that you guys have had <coughs> together? Just kind of being that dynamic duo up front. Yeah, um, Shaylee's super special. Definitely part of the reason I'm upset. Um, she just puts in a lot of hard work, and me and her get shots up every day together. Sorry. So, we'll definitely miss her, but um, yeah, I'm super proud of her. I know she has a lot of great things ahead. Um, it's not like her story stops here at all. We're super blessed to have had her the past two years. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's an amazing person more than anything, and I know God has a lot of great things in store for her, so I'm excited for her in that uh, way. But yeah, definitely gonna miss her. Um, Grace Rayner with The Athletic. For any of you three, um, just before halftime, the NCAA announced the two three-point lines were not the same. Did you guys notice that? Um, and I guess what-, what They were not thinking? aware. They were not aware, no. okay. We have time for one last question for our student athletes. We'll go to Lindsay. <coughs> Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Shay, I just wondered, um, with what Isaiah did today, did you were you surprised? Did she remind you of anyone that you had played against previously, or was she just unconscious? Um, I. I won't say she's unconscious, it was unconscious because she's a really good player and she's super talented. So um, she definitely played very well, but um, good players play well in big games and she did that. Um, so I don't want to take away from anything. It's not like she played out of her mind, I wouldn't say, because she's more than capable. Um, she played great the game before this and uh, we got to watch that game. I mean, it was definitely a good game for her, I would say. Um, but yeah, she's just really talented player, so. 
to our student athletes, we thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on a great season. Floor is now open to questions for Coach Schaefer. Start with Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Vic, can you talk to us about the three-point line that you were told before the game, and did it matter if it had been right? Would Do you think that maybe Isaiah James wouldn't have hit all those threes? None of us know what the actual measurements were. Maybe you do and could share with us. Yeah, I... Uh... I was notified, I don't know, I think my kids were warming up that there was a discrepancy and, um, and so I think, I think it's about a foot from one end to the other. But they gave us the option of bringing somebody in and remarking it correctly, which would have taken an hour and we might have lost our window with ABC or playing how it was. Wes wanted to play and we played. I mean, I wasn't going to be the guy that goes, no, I don't want to do it. So, um, you know, I don't really, you want to know if I think it had anything to do with the game? Probably not. But I really would have loved to have done what I normally do my last 12 minutes before a game instead of walking around out there trying to see if the floor's screwed up. Vic, why, why did you not want to take the delay to get it right? Well, our kids had, had already warmed up. It would have been a minimum hour because they were going to have to bring somebody in from outside and the potential of losing our window on ABC. Um, Danny, if I would have done it, I'd have been the only one in the room that wanted to do it. And, uh, again, at the end of the day, when we went out there and analyzed it, it just – at the end of the day, we'd already played a game on it, and we both won, and um, so we just decided to play. Come back first. Matt Hermides from the Daily Texan. Coach, a lot to be desired at the end of this one. Just can you talk about um, what makes this team so special, um, even when it ends here in the Elite Eight? Well, I mean, anybody that's been around and, and – uh, seen teams and how they develop and the players that are on those teams and what their skill sets are and capabilities, their, their uh, ability to play the game and their investment. Um, you know, when I watch this team grow over the last three months, the investment that they put into the game is probably number one uh, because they had to. Uh, you know, we, we've been hit, hit, we've been behind the eight ball a lot this year. With, with Rory, then Taylor, well, let me start over, with Deanna, then Rory, then Taylor, then Deanna again, um, then Booker for a game. So we just, you know, this, this group's been so resilient. Um, and, and so on a day when our toughness wasn't quite what it's been, um, you just can't let one day define you. like. One day doesn't define this team. Everything they've been, they would, I think somebody told me that it hadn't been, they haven't won 33 games at Texas since 1987-88. And you think about all the history and the tradition of Texas women's basketball and, and all that, and this team did something that hasn't been done in 40 years? Come on. And did it with, under some really challenging um, situations. So we'll be back. I can say that with great confidence. If, if we lose Shaley and Hattie, the class that we have coming in, Rory back healthy, and everybody else a year older and a year wiser, I'll be sitting here next March 31st. Is that what today is? There you go. I mean, I always say if I'm doing my job, I'm playing to April. I almost got there. But if you know anything about this group, anything about this team, those kids are so special, man. They're some of the best kids I've ever been around in my life. So it's been, I'm heartbroken for them because I wanted them to experience, you know, 
going to the Final Four, playing in that game. But at the same time, I couldn't be prouder of a group. Grace Rayner with The Athletic, um, forgive me for my ignorance on this one, but which three-point line was correct? Like, which, which end was wrong? Come on, Grace. Uh, <laughs> shit, that was about two and a half or three hours ago and some crying in between, so I'm not sure I can remember. <laughs> ah, shoot, Grace, I don't know. I can tell you this. Go out there and get up in the stands and look at it, and you can see it. Lex Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah. If I could, Alexa Philp at ESPN, was it one that was too short or one that was too long? Do you remember that? I, I, I think Coach already said he doesn't remember, so we okay. can move on to the next I did question. have another question, if I could actually ask that one, too. Um, with, Isaiah James, with Isaiah James going off the way she did, did you think that was more of a defensive breakdown or just a player that was on a heater? Hey, you go back and look at the film. Shea Holly's standing right there looking at her a bunch, you know. I mean, okay, we could turn nine threes into nine twos, and that cuts it to nine, but she's going to get by you. You know, she's just so quick and athletic. Their athleticism and length at guard was a real concern going in. First thing on the board was, on the defensive side, was transition defense. We had 16 points we gave up at halftime. They didn't get any the second half. That was number one. Number two was dribble penetration. So to me, that was the two things that we really had pinpointed and talked about. And we just had a hard time getting, you know, handling it. But, you know, we, it, it, it just happens that way. And, and again, I, I, man, Shea Holly's been nothing short of spectacular this year for me. So uh, I think the kid was, she's a really good player, and today she was outstanding. You got to pat her on the back. You know, we talk about it all the time. Sometimes you just got to pat them on the butt and tell them, I'll see you the next time down. That's what we had to do with her because she made some really tough shots. Kevin? Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. The, the way you jumped in, it seems like it was a choice not to tell the players about the three-point line. Did you kind of not want that to be in their heads? Yeah, no, I mean, there's no point in talking about it. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it was, um, like I said, it's, you guys are going to make a big deal out of it. I, again, I don't, it's a shame, but it is what it is. And I just, I don't think anybody wanted to, draw attention to it and put the thing off for an hour, you know? I mean, it just, and at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know that it, it mattered. Brenna? Brenna Green, Coin6 here in Portland. Um, is it disappointing at all to you that we're having to spend half your press conference right now talking about a three-point line instead of talking about your team? Well, I hate to say this, but I have a lot of colleagues that would say only in women's basketball. I mean, it's, it's a shame, really, that it even happened. But it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm not the culprit here. You guys are asking me about something that I had no control over. So Vic Schaefer ain't the problem. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. So it, it just, it's a shame. That's all I can say. I'll be, like, I'll be glad to talk about my team, though. I'm really proud of them. Yeah, Danny. Unfortunately, you're up there instead of an NCAA rep. But um, how limited was Taylor today, and um, what was kind of her status today as far as? Yeah, I mean, she was cleared, obviously, and um, you know, uh, played well for her 10 minutes that she played, and uh, certainly made an impact. Would like to have probably played her a little more, um, but um, you know, when I played her the first half, she missed a hedge and gave up a driving layup, and. Um, she had a much better second time through, so she was completely, obviously, our people did a, are going to be very thorough, and she was completely cleared, so. This will need to be our last question. Um, Bella Munson with the next. You got some really good minutes from your sophomore, um, Wintanda. I'm sorry if I'm saying yeah. that not entirely Muen correct. Wintanda. Wintanda. Um, she came in, gave really good offensive minutes, got really big boards. Can you just speak about sort of the boost she gave your team off the bench today? Yeah, I'm proud of her. You know, she didn't uh, – came up, she came off the bench the other night and didn't play very well. And she knew it, and it upsets her. She kid wants to please so bad. And, 
Uh, I want her to be, you know, I want her to be uh, great. I mean, I think the kid that can be, but, you know, uh, seemed like Friday night she couldn't get out of her own way. Tonight she played well. And I uh, think she's really comfortable in certain things that we do, like when we're playing zone. She's really good at the top of the zone and um, takes up a lot of room and space. And um, she just was different tonight, which I'm, I'm really thrilled for her. She's a great kid, man. Like she's a great kid. Mom played at uh, what played for Wendy Larry, um, and uh, and so she's she comes from from a, a really good family and, and basketball family, and so um, was happy for her to see her come in and and be able to help us a little bit. So, you know, again, we we missed a ton of shots, y'all. I mean, we missed some point blank shots. Sometimes that happens, and it hadn't happened to us all year, but tonight it happened. But Sometimes it happens on that stage, right? Especially when you, you've got some, some uh, kids that maybe haven't been there. And uh, so, again, um, before I go, I just want to thank everybody for being here. And I want to thank everybody for what you mean to our game. Um, you know, I've, I've done this a long time. I've seen some of y'all, y'all weren't even around when I first started coaching. And that's a good thing. But the, the end of the day, to have y'all here covering our game and promoting our game and caring about our game um, means so much. And um, for me, for somebody who's literally invested my life in this game, I want you to know how much it's appreciated. Our student athletes appreciate you. My administration appreciates you. And I can tell you, as the head coach at the University of Texas, I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, you just keep telling the good stories and hopefully we won't give you too many bad ones, but um, we get it. Sometimes the good comes with the bad, but you know, I, it's one of the things I'm proud about this group, y'all. You're never gonna write anything bad about them. You're never gonna write anything about their character. These kids are, they're great Longhorns and they're incredible competitors and they do it the right way. And that's how I can sit up here today with a smile on my face, even though I just got beat, and be so proud of them. Because I know they did everything they could today, yesterday, the day before, to get to this point. Trust me, this was not easy. And just like I told y'all, Apollo 13, rewiring the capsule to get them home, it's a, it was a challenge. But I'm going to tell you, I think we got them home. And that was our goal. And we'll be back. Thank y'all. Praise the Lord and hook them horns. Thank y'all.